It was good in the 50s, in the late 50s. It was good. Uh, fishing, the markets wasn't good for the, for the, all the scallops had to be all sent to London. You landed at night and they were picked up by a lorry, brought down to the steam packet, put on the steam packet and brought to Liverpool, put on the train and delivered to London. And the two, the two big salesmen in London, Baxter was one, I can't remember the other one, and they sold them on the Billingsgate market. But sometimes in the likes of the spring of the year when it started getting a bit warmer, they had no close season in them days, it was just fished through. When it started getting warm, you sometimes got a, what they call a blue note, which was co condemned. They were they, they'd gone, gone off with the heat, so you never got paid for them, so you fished that day or two days, whatever it was, and you never got paid for them. So you fished that for nothing. But otherwise, the fishing, there was no local market for scallops. Scallops never started in. The scallops didn't, uh, local markets never started, I would think, ooh, into the 60s, before they started in here. And the Queenies, a fella called Sid Higgins started the Queenies. He started cleaning Queenies here then, because nobody, Queenies to us in them days was a nuisance. You filled your dredges up when there was that many Queenies about. You couldn't go anywhere without Queenies. And the targets there was a big scallop area. But to get to the scallops, you had to go through the Queenies, and the Queenies were filling your net, your dredges up straight you away. For. So there was no market for it. You just dumped them back. But the scallops, say we landed them every day, like. And then in the springtime, June, went to Herm, drift nets. Six men, we should take, we walked four men in the winter time on the boat, but we took two extra men on in the summer for the drift nets, for the Herm. And they, they were they were so lovely to the Kipicurus, and they took a lot of Herm. And all the Irishmen, they came here and drift nets as well. What was it like, what was it like when, you know, how, must have been super busy for the heron in, in those days. Oh, and very, how, very. How much heron was out there, you know, tons. Plenty of heron. I, was, I came down here from, the, from Scotland on the Scotch boats just to fish the heron. There was a whole fleet in Campbelltown, there must have been 40 or 50 boats, and they all came down here fishing heron. In his, uh, for a few weeks. For and, all, and all the Irish boats? All the Irish boats were fishing. But there wasn't a big fleet of Irish boats then, there was a few <coughs> in Port of Ogie. Uh, I don't think there was any Kilkeel, was there? No. No Kilkeel boats fished the Herren up here, it was just the Port of Ogie boats. But there was a lot of boats from the east coast of Scotland, the LH, from fishing around Edinburgh way and Pitt and Weem. There was a fleet of boats used to come, in. they came at the beginning of June, but they left before we did, because they were going to a fishing. There was a big fishing round at uh, North Shields then, and they used to go to that fishing at Shields. And uh, they left here then, and the fishing here used to finish around about August. And that was us then. It must have been an unbelievably busy place. But then, the, the, all the, the people, the, you know, the fisheries. Oh, the, there was, there was, there was the, 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 the fishery girls used to come here from all over Scotland. They got to, got to, in her. Got in Herring and barreling them. Gotten them very quick. Gotten them by hand and put them in barrels. Salt, yeah. But it got in a big way around about uh, 90, the late 70s. This big Scotch boat started coming down and that finished the Herring fishing. It just overfished everything. And, uh, How many was, boats would there have been here? Oh, don't know a minute. Then, you well, couldn't move, you could walk across the harbour one Gone side up. to the other, there was that many boats. How many boats? The place was full of boats. Yeah, Scotch boats. Massive big boats. They had nothing at home then. They, they closed the North Sea off for herring fishing. They all came down here and just cleared this place up. And you got all the big Dutch luggers coming with the yeah. barrels. This, was, this pier was full of barrels. Come in, come in and land to them, then they'd go away and come back again. Big, big fleet of boats. But uh, Sam said, the boats were out and just filled up every night. Every night. They killed, they killed a lot of fish. But it was all landed here. Yeah. Well, I, here, here in Whitehaven. Yeah. 
Well, I came here on the, on the, on the Scottish ring net boats fishing heaven. We had come in here every morning, and there was a market here. You had to put a sample of herring up, of the herring you'd caught, in a box, and the buyers bought them. It's an auction. But the trouble was, there were some boats used to what we call giving clips. They were selling herring, they might have had 40 crown. So they were selling 35 and 5 crown backhander, free. So some of the boats wouldn't have to go away. But we used to have to come in, the, the West Coast men, they didn't do that. It was East Coast men used to do it. But the West Coast men, we'd come in here, we'd put a sample up. Eight o'clock in the morning, the sale would start, or maybe seven, I can't remember, seven or eight. And they would turn around and say, fish meal. That means the buyers here didn't want them because they had enough from the other boats they were given clips of. So we had to steam from here to Port Patrick, which was, what, four hours? Yeah. Go in there, and I mean, you're talking about 50, 60 boats in the Port Patrick, and the lorries would be there and take your fish from there to the fish meal plant. This was every, well, every other day. And we never get, saw many. And you get paid peanuts for them. You get paid peanuts for them. And then uh, you had to steam all the way back here for that night's fishing. <coughs> See you, mate. So so, Saturday morning, if you left. Was that because there was ju just too much fish here for them to process? Them yes, to you didn't want them. Too yet. much. Too many, too many. But uh, on a Saturday morning, you'd steam up there. So when was this? Was this, the, this was when it was crazy here? When this was in, no, up? this was in the 50s. This was the oh, late right, 50s. Right, yeah. Uh, late 50s, 60. No, in the late 50s, there was, was too much herring getting landed for the local market. They couldn't handle all the kipper. Kipper curers couldn't handle all the herring that was getting landed. So a lot of it had to be come in here, get your, put them up for auction. Nobody bought them. You had to take them away off island and then come back that night and fish again. There was no quotas or nothing. No, nobody bought what you landed or what you didn't land. That was in the 70s, in the wasn't 70s, it? Yeah. In the 70s, yeah. In the 70s, everybody come here. A massive fleet of boats, Scotland, Ireland, all the Manx boats, everybody. And it was a Klondike. You were guaranteed to fill your boat every night. There was that much, there was that much hearn about. And you had all the big luggers here, taking them, taking them away. But everybody was making good money. You couldn't, you couldn't not make good money. Hadn't the, 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 the Keyside was full of bottles. They were battling the herring, the Dutchman. Take them away. And land, and <coughs> land here and the land in Ireland, <coughs> la, land around in Whitehaven. Steam away, land, back the next morning. We're fishing, mostly fishing at night time there. Pair troll. Two boats pulling the one net. You were, you, were, you were sure you would go away and your boat would be loaded every night. Everybody making good money. The town was booming here as well. I don't know how many boats would have been here. There'd been hundreds of boats, Sam, wouldn't oh, there? Oh, terrible. Hundreds of boats. Yeah. There were good days. It was a shame to see it finish. But these things happen, don't they? So what, so what, what happened? What, what made it finish? Just overfished. They just cleared everything. They didn't... There was no rules and regulations. There was, but nobody paid any attention to them. I mean, uh, it was just, it was just a free for all in the late 70s, and that's what finished the happen. Well, as they say, all the good things, <laughs> all the good things have to come to an end. That's what they say, don't they? Yeah, but it's, it just never came back. Nobody ever, you know. It'd be nice to see it come back, but it'll never happen now. It'll never happen now. There is, so, a, there is a few here and there. It's all quotas now. The only bits, the only boats that fish here now off here is, well, one, two, three Irish boats the from, Irish, north, from the north of Ireland and a couple from the south of Ireland. The Irish boats own the, own the Isle of Man quota. They own it now. They've got the quotas. Not allowed to fish them here. Manx boats are not allowed. Right, yeah. Terrible, isn't it? Manx herring, but the boats can't catch it. It's mad. Yeah, yeah. It's it is mad. They're trying to get a... 
a quota, well, it's really a small quota for a couple of the local boats here, whether they get it or not, it's another thing. But they're trying at the minute. They're trying to get a herring quota and a mackerel quota. But they have to, that's in the hands of the government, they have to wait and see.